See, that without doubt is going to give you the freedom to get a better snare drum sound. And this is just something that I, I feel isn't spoken a lot about in the drummer community. Hello, my name is Ross Rothero Borge and I mix audio for Zildjian and Vic Firth. And today we're going to be talking about recording. Uh, I doubt many of you have a mixing console like this at home, but a lot of people are recording at home now. Especially over lockdown, I've been getting a lot of messages from people all over the world, emails saying, how can I make my drum sound better? This is what I've got at home, what can I do? So I thought I'd put together this little series to give some tips and tricks about what you can do at home to maximize your drum and cymbal sound. Today we're gonna to go right back to the start and we're gonna talk about what I don't see spoken about too much if I'm honest, which is the positioning of drums and cymbals and their relationship with each other and how we can maximize our drum sound just from the positioning alone. That's where we're gonna start. Let's have a look at these pictures and I shall explain. Okay, so let's start with our kick and our snare and Super Speedy Ross is gonna chuck up some overheads for us as well. So before I get any further, I just wanna point out that these aren't gonna suit everyone. If you're doing something super fast, super technical and you want everything kind of really close together, um, this might not be for you, but you can maybe try and meet the engineer in the middle or maybe just take a few of these points as opposed to just like trying to go for all of them that I'm gonna, gonna explain now. So I think this is a pretty standard setup right now. I think this is how most people would approach recording a, a kick and a snare where they put their overheads but in the search for perfection you can see that I want a great picture of the drum kit from the from the overheads and already my kick is centered but my snare drum is way off to the left so how are we going to get around that I'm going to move my mat around a little bit look at that so now my my kick and my snare are both in the center of my picture from my from my overheads a second snare for for good measure and you've guessed it straight down the middle, all three of them, and that's where they would be in my door, that's where I'd have them panned, that's where I'd have them in the mix. And furthering that, let's set up my rack and my floor tom. And again, this is where they would be positioned in my door. My, my rack tom would be just off a little bit and my floor tom would be off a little bit. So I listen to the overheads and I try and pan things out or pan the close mics out to where I hear them in the stereo image of the overheads and try and match it. So these are just a little bit panned out. Hi-hats, okay, hi-hats is a big one. In the quest to try and get your snare drum as, as good as it can sound, you just want the sound of the snare drum. You don't wanna be compromising the sound of your snare drum because you're getting a lot of hi-hat bleed. I play with my hi-hats really high, like you can see here, and I try and encourage the drummers that I work with to get the hats as, as high as they're comfortable with. Um, but you need that separation. This is gonna be great for your snare drum sound, but also great for your cymbal sound, because you're not just getting a load of bleed from the snare drum. How you would treat a cymbal and how you would treat a snare are two completely different things. So you wanna kind of separate those out as much as, as, much as possible. In this recording uh, of Nevermind here, you can see Dave Grohl uh, setting up his kit with Butch Vig here. And I like to think that this is a little conversation that he's having with the producer. And they've said, if you want that snare drum to be as aggressive and for us to have freedom of processing with the snare drum, you're gonna need to get those hi-hats up and out of the way. So I think the hi-hats look like they're as high as they'll go on the stand there. And uh, the snare drum probably looks as low as it'll go. There's, there's looks like a foot in between the two. He kind of he kind of plays like this. Um, and the result is a really great snare drum sound, but I don't think this is really taken into consideration in the drumming world. I think people think what's most comfortable and what's most kind of economic for doing some amazing chops and super fast fills. Uh, but quite a lot of the time in the studio, you don't need any of that. Um, you, can, you can play with your hats a bit higher if you're just playing something super simple. And, um, and I think you're gonna get a better result in, in drum sound out of it. So let's go to our cymbals. Again, same with the with the snare drum and hats, crash and toms. I try and get my crashes up out of the way and that way I've got better isolation for my toms. And I try and get my crashes all at the same, all at the same level, all at the same height. Um, I find the, the crash on the on the, the drummer's left hand side near his hi-hats and that the rack tom is higher, so that crash usually seems higher, and then 
because the floor tom is lower, I usually find that that crash is, is lower, but that's kind of reflected again in, in our picture of, of the overheads. I want those crashes to kind of be a similar volume in the mix. So um, maybe dependent on size. Um, if one was a bit smaller, I might have it up a little bit higher. If one was bigger, I might have it down a little bit lower, but I'm trying to self mix in the overheads essentially. Um, so here you can see I've all got fairly similar sized crashes here and uh, they're all at a fairly similar, fairly similar height. You can see here, this is Taylor Hawkins set up. You can see he's got his crashes way up out of the way, but he's that they look like maybe 20 inch crashes, I guess, but he's he wants that isolation for the toms. Um, and I think that's a conversation he's had with his engineer and uh, he wants to maximize his drum sound as well as his cymbal sound. So he's tried to separate the two out. So you can see with the crashes up out of the way, this gives me complete freedom to be able to position the mic wherever I want to put it. Um, Positioning the mic is so key to getting a great drum sound. The closer you are, the more kind of proximity and kind of low end you're going to get. The further away you are, the thinner it's going to sound. But you need to be able to get the sweet spot to get the drum sounding, any of the drums sounding, as good as possible. But if you've got a cymbal really, really close, not only is the cymbal going to sound horrible in that in that mic because you're, you're kind of getting the bleed from the back of the microphone, um, the drums aren't going to sound as good because you can't position it in the sweet spot. So by having the cymbals up out of the way, the cymbals are just being heard through the overheads and your drums are just being heard through that mic that is in the right position for that drum. Here you can see a picture of Ash Sloane. This rack tom here you can see there's nothing really that close to it. That crash is, uh, is off quite far to his left there and out of the way of that tom and you can see the crash on the other side there on the floor side is also up out of the way so you can get the mics in a perfect position. There's also plenty of space there to put the snare drum mic wherever, wherever he sees fit and wherever gets uh, the best snare drum sound and Ash gets some great results for sure. So I hope you can implement one or all or meet me halfway on a couple of these techniques um, to achieve a better drum sound before it's even got to your computer. Uh, I think in a lot of genres, rock, pop, hip hop, country, if you're playing to a track, you're not doing all the technical stuff. So you don't need everything really, really tightened together like you might have if you were doing all the technical stuff. Um, get that separation and concentrate on getting a better drum sound. Uh, if you find this at all helpful, hit me up in the comments. Let me know if you've thought about this before or if you've got any more ideas and uh, let me know and I'll start using them myself. Nice one. Cheers.